Hello and welcome to Run Testers, my name is Nick and this is our review of the Arc'teryx Northern LD3 Gore-Tex version. So the LD3 GTX is the waterproof version of the Arc'teryx Northern LD a long distance trail running shoe. We've got a review up on the channel from Tom of the standard version which I've also used a couple of times myself but we wanted to review the waterproof version as I've been using it a lot of late. It's a fair bit more expensive than the standard version costing £180 or $200 whereas the standard shoe is £150 or $165. It weighs in at 297 grams or 10.5 ounces which is a little rise in weight on the standard version because of that Gore-Tex liner and has a 29mm stackite at the heel, 23mm at the forefoot for a 6mm drop. So Northern LD is designed to be a pretty versatile trail shoe in terms of the terrain it can tackle. It's built for long distances and long distance events where you're likely to come across a wide range of terrain. It's got a single layer mesh upper with that Gore-Tex liner underneath to make it a waterproof shoe. You've got a fairly substantial toe cap on the shoe as well to protect the toes and provide some abrasion resistance on the upper. The infused midsole is made from a mix of EVA and polyolefine materials and it's a pretty balanced material all round. It's got a little bit of bounce. It's quite comfortable, but it's not as soft and squishy as some of the super foams found on road shoes. You've got a Vibram Mega Grip outsole with four millimeter lugs that are fairly wide and flat, so they are comfortable and smooth on harder surfaces, but a little bit of bite there if you are gonna stray onto soft stuff. I found that the Northern LD fit me very well in my normal running shoe size. It's got a fairly stiff uh, heel on the shoe, which provides a good bit of support, and it does hold the heel nice and securely in place, and there's a good lock around the midfoot as well. So if you are on jagged terrain where your foot's turning a fair bit, your foot isn't going to move around laterally too much in the shoe. I have enough room in my toe box, even over long distances, no concerns there. And with the Gore-Tex liner, the shoe doesn't get stiff or unpleasant in any way. It still feels nice and comfortable. It's a fairly pliant upper still. So yeah, I would stick with your normal running shoe size with the Northern LD3. So the Arc'teryx Northern LD3 Gore-Tex shoe landed uh, on my doorstep just before I was heading up to Scotland over the new year to visit family. So it was really well timed, which is why I've done a fair bit of running in the shoe. I took it up there to run in the Pentland Hills just outside Edinburgh mainly, and it was pretty cold up there. So I've been running on a nice mix of terrains, a nice mix of weathers. So it's been some frozen stuff, some icy runs, and then a fair bit of uh, very wet and muddy running in cold conditions as well. So the Gore-Tex upper was very welcome. So I did a couple of two hour kind of 20k plus long runs in the shoe while I was up in Edinburgh and then I used it today for one more run down in London which is just absurdly wet at the moment. Just went for a run in my local forest and all the normal paths are pretty flooded like just running in streams of water at times. So again Gore-Tex upper very handy. So the first run I did in the shoe was 23k along the seven reservoirs route up in the Pentlands if anyone knows that. It is a half marathon distance run uh, with a little bit extra added on to and from the route and there's actually a lot more roads than I expected I will say in the shoe along with some very muddy grassy sections as as well so the versatility of the grip was welcome there on the Arc'teryx it is pretty comfortable for fairly long stints on the road it's not exceptionally comfortable it's, it's not as good on this front as a true road to trail shoe or something like the Nike Pegasus trail which has a very comfortable ride when you are on the road but it was fine for doing fairly long stints of a few k here and there on the road and then had this that little bit more grip that <laughs> which you do need when you hit the grassy stuff around uh, in the UK in particular which is often pretty muddy or icy as was the case on this run so it was pretty good on that run but I think I much preferred actually when I ran uh, mostly on trails the following day i did another 20k run up scald law in the pentlands which is you know, not the highest hill in the world it's about just shy of 600 meters but it has a very steep climb uh, i did on the run of 300 meters in around 1.5k up and down so i got to test the shoe on a nice steep descent again this was a much muddier day because the temperature had warmed up a little bit so lots of grassy running on the mud and shoe handled it really quite well like it doesn't feel that big a shoe but it's not the lightest in the world so when i was you know, trekking up the hill it felt nice and nimble underfoot and then it did provide pretty good grip when coming down it uh, trying to run a little bit faster than I had on the way up but you can't go too fast in that kind of descent unless you know what you're doing and I don't really know what I'm doing so um but I was impressed by the grip on a lot of grassy stuff again I was running on some wet rocks at times there's one section on both runs where I was running essentially along a river uh, because the path had just become a river and it was all rocks underfoot and the grip was pretty good there aside from basically deep muddy segments when it did come unstuck or really icy rocks uh, the grip has been really good across the board with the Arc'teryx I'd say and quite impressive given that the lugs aren't that deep it did bite sufficiently well into the soft stuff that I felt pretty safe and secure running down steep hills uh, where normally I would probably
probably opt for something like a six millimeter or an eight millimeter lug shoe if I was going out onto that kind of stuff for the whole run. But with the versatility you get with this shoe, it means that it can handle that whilst then being a lot more comfortable on those road sections. So across both of those runs, the Gore-Tex upper was very much welcomed. Like on the first day, it was really cold, like I say, and there was a lot of like icy puddles you'd break through. And if you know if you go into that in a normal shoe and the icy water gets in, it's going to really take the edge off the enjoyment for the rest of your run. And the Gore-Tex upper just kept it all at bay, kept my feet nice and warm. It wasn't uncomfortable at all, as I mentioned in the fix section. I did exactly what you know what you expect from a Gore-Tex upper. And on the really deep mud I've done, I've had in my uh, sec in my second and third runs in the shoe, it's done a really good job there as well. You Again, just stops that stuff getting into the shoe, which a, is a nightmare to clean, and also just yeah makes your foot cold and unpleasant for the whole run. So on the second run in Scotland, I did I did finally burst through a deep enough puddle that I got some water into the shoe right at the end of the run. But up until that point, it had seen off a load of frozen puddles, a load of deep mud, and just yeah exactly because you're out for two hours, you are going to be coming down some hills slowly, going up some hills slowly. You just don't want your feet to start getting really cold. And the Gore-Tex upper was absolutely ideal for that kind of thing throughout the run. I so the ride is pretty good for a mix of speeds as well. Like it might be a decent long distance racing shoe wouldn't be great for the shorter stuff I think I'd just have a nimbler shoe myself for that especially on the fells where I just go for all-out grip and hardly any kind of upper but this is a comfortable shoe for those long distances and again it's got a really good versatility in terms of the terrain it can handle I would say maybe on that first run I think I noticed that the midsole probably hardened up a little bit that's probably why the ride wasn't quite as nice as well as being on a lot more road in my first run in the shoe uh, I think it was a couple of degrees sub-zero on that run so maybe you are getting that little bit of a hardening that you tend to get with EVA foams in particular and why it was a lot softer and a more enjoyable today in particular in London when the temperature was up near a you know high single digits so that's something to look out for but it certainly wasn't uncomfortable on that first run I think it's been more comfortable in slightly higher temperatures and I do think it's a really good option for cruising around a variety of runs on a mix of terrains especially through the winter months when you want to keep your feet warm and dry. Verdict is this is a really good versatile winter running option that will handle a good mix of trails and a nice range of lengths and types of run you might want to do on the trails whether you're going out for just easy plods or day-long explorations or want to accelerate and do something slightly faster on it it can the northern ld can do all of that pretty well like i say not the best for actual all-out racing for short stuff it'll do a good job of longer races and general training runs for sure the waterproof upper works very well it's not uncomfortable kept a lot of ice cold water and mud at bay on my runs in the shoe and that was very welcome price is very high though i mean arcteryx are not exactly known for being a cheap brand but the price is really high here even compared to the normal version of the shoe it's quite a steep jump i'd say and there are a couple of really good options that come in a fair bit cheaper that i'd be that i have tested fairly recently Socony Peregrine a 13 GTX is one and then the Puma Voyage Nitro 3 I tested the standard version of that shoe but there is a Gore-Tex version of that shoe as well both of those are substantially cheaper I think they're really good shoes as well you can get a Gore-Tex upper on them you can get the same level of waterproofing and then it's the difference in performance isn't massive I do think I probably slightly prefer the Northern LD3 of the trio of the shoes in terms of the comfortable ride you get here and the enjoyment I got from it over long distances in particular I think it's certainly more comfortable than the Peregrine I'd say over long distances and if you are eyeing up ultra races I think the LD3 would be worth the extra investment over the Peregrine because it is a fair bit more comfortable on those distances. However, you know, if you're going out for up to two, three hours, which is probably about the maximum I'd hit in this shoe, then I don't think there's a massive difference in performance there. And you can pay a lot less and get the Peregrine or the Voyage Nitro 3, which are both also often in sales. So I'd go for one of those two if you're just looking for a general waterproof trail shoe. But if you are eyeing up very long distances in particular, the uh, Arcteryx Northern LD3 is a really good option. And the Gore-Tex shoe is a really good one if you are going to be doing those long runs in very cold conditions, snowy conditions, or in areas where you'll have a lot of wet puddles to splash through. That's our review of the Arcteryx Northern LD3 Gore-Tex version. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.